But there's also some differences that we need to keep in mind, and that will be the focus of a lot of the lecture today. One of the main differences is that when you're talking about multi-electron orbitals, they're actually smaller than the corresponding orbital for the hydrogen atom. We can think about why that would be. Let's consider, again, an s orbital for argon. So let's say we're looking at the 1s orbital for argon. What is the pull from the nucleus on argon going to be equal to? What is the charge of the nucleus? Does anyone know it's a quick addition problem here? Yeah, so it's 18. So z equals 18. So the, uh, the nucleus is going to be pulling at the electron with a Coulombic attraction that has a charge of plus 18 if we're talking about uh, the 1s electron or the 1s orbital in argon. It turns out, and we're going to get to the idea of shielding, so it's not going to actually feel that full plus 18, but it'll feel a whole lot more than it will just feel in terms of a hydrogen atom where we only have a nuclear charge of 1. So because we're feeling a stronger attractive force from the nucleus, we're actually pulling that electron in closer, which means that the probability squared of where the electron is going to be is actually a smaller radius. So when we talk about the size of multi-electron orbitals, they're actually going to be smaller because they're being pulled in closer to the nucleus because of that stronger attraction because of the higher charge of the nucleus in a multi-electron atom compared to a hydrogen atom. The other main difference that we're really going to get to today is that in multi-electron atoms, orbital energies depend not just on the shell, which is what, what we saw before, not just on the value of n, but also on the angular momentum quantum number. So they also depend on the subshell, or L. And we'll really get to see a picture of that, and I'll be repeating that again and again today, because this is something I really want everyone to get firmly into their heads. <laughs> 